This is Twit. Tell us uh, what came across your line of sight this week. Sure. Yeah. So um, I was slightly terrified this week, so I thought that might be <laughs> worth talking about. <laughs> um, the uh, I, I don't. This actually happened a few days ago. So, um, but the Boston Dynamic uh, Robotics Company released its new humanoid robot, and it was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If we, okay, watch this because it's like look. It looks like a dead. It's laying on the ground. On the yeah, it's. And then, it's oh a, my god! What? Its <laughs> what legs it bend up toward its torso, <laughs> and then suddenly it's like you know you thought I was laying one way. I'm actually laying the other oh, way. Let me just I turn know. my <laughs> legs and arms around, and my face, which is just a selfie ring light. Oh. <laughs> that's what it looks like yes no and you know this is uh, all jokes aside this is is really quite an impressive machine um and as a smart home reviewer i actually have spent a lot of time with robots and robot type devices in my home and always really kind of keeping an eye on the robotic space and this is a real step forward kind of in the humanoid robotic form. Um, it, Atlas is, so the story here is that uh, Boston Dyma Dynamics um, was retired its original Atlas robot, which is the one that was you were just showing there, um, which was a much more robot-like <laughs> humanoid robot. Um, it, you know, it, it doesn't look sort of like someone that you might want to hang out with. Whereas <laughs> the new, and that was a hydraulic robot, whereas this Atlas is an all new electric version of this humanoid robot. And it really does have very sort of strong humanoid characteristics. Um, the, the really amusingly, Boston Dynamics tweeted, no, it's not someone in a suit. <laughs> As a, a shade there <laughs> to the other more recent uh, humanoid robot that Tesla showed off, um, which was a person in a suit. But this this is a real kind of leap forward. Um, and it's interesting from being you know, commerced, it's designed... They're actually the part. The first partnership is with Hyundai. Hi, uh, sorry. Oh yeah, Hyundai. <laughs> um, yeah, Hyundai, mm -hmm. um, which actually owns Boston Dynamics. But there, um, so the idea is eventually the robot, and this will take many years, can work on the factory floor doing sort of the more dangerous work, maybe the more repetitive work that humans can't do. But where I found this interesting slash scary um, is this is sort of the first time I've seen a robot that looks like the kind of Rosie the robot of the Jetsons kind of yes. dream I've always had of having a smart home assistant. And it's also made me realize that perhaps I don't want that after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, there was, so, yeah, there was something charming about Rosie and maybe yeah. it was the fact that we're looking at an animation and that helps keep it in this fake kind of realm. And I also just pictured almost like taking an auric vacuum cleaner and putting it, you know, putting a, a wheel on it and it, you know, talks very robotic. It just, it feels separated yeah. enough from humanity. And then I think at the time, maybe we didn't have as much scary uh, instance, right? We didn't have as much scary right. we kind of had horror about the Terminator robots. hadn't yeah. come out. Terminator <laughs> and iRobot and some of the others yeah. were not there yet to make us go, ooh, I've got second thoughts about all of this. Because I don't know, yeah. I, I, I think that there's definitely a part of me that loves the idea of not having to do my laundry anymore. <laughs> I think that would be fantastic. Even, even if it just folded my laundry for me, that's really all I want. And, you know, we've had the promise of laundry robots in the past that never come true. Uh, the folding robot at the C at yeah, CES, CES I've seen every three or four times. Year and it yeah, never is real. Your clothes. <laughs> is that also a person wearing a laundry folding? Ro yeah. Uh, so I, I love that idea, but do you think that, look, depending on who you talk to, um, a, a true self-driving car, the sort of um, fully autonomous, truly fully autonomous can drive anywhere a uh, self-driving car is so far in the future that we won't ever see it, depending on who you talk to. That's that's the the belief. Um, yeah. When we talk about AI and where it's headed, maybe that's a little bit more graspable. When we talk about AR and VR and how uh, far we are from just being able to put on some glasses, that's pretty far in the future. How far away do you think it is for us to have a rosy robot in our homes? Is that 
is that closer rather than further away? Or is all of this still kind of military applications and uh, bomb diffusing applications and that kind of thing? Yeah, so I think we are actually closer than we have been in a long time. Um, as I said, I've tested robots in my home that are similar in concept, like the Amazon Astro, although it doesn't have arms. Um, there are, and we already have a lot of robots in our homes. But I think where I'm kind of coming to is that we probably don't need a butler. We don't need this multi-purpose humanoid robot walking around our house, doing things for us, unloading the dishwasher for us, folding our clothes. What we probably do need and what's much more likely to come and what we already have to some extent are individual robots that help with tasks. Mm. Um, so we already have robot vacuums and robot mops. I have two robot lawnmowers going around my garden right now that I'm testing. <laughs> um, they're not- I want to visit your but- place. Like, <laughs> I, I just really want to see everything because it's got to be like Willy Wonka there. <laughs> it sounds incredible. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Slightly dystopian. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, but yes, you know, and I think it's an interesting goal to have the Rose of the Robot. And I think there are a lot of manufacturers and researchers that sort of trying to achieve this. And the big thing here, obviously, is the mobility. And this is what this Atlas robot does that we really haven't seen before is that very fluid, natural humanoid movements. And um, actually the news, you know, what Boston Dynamics was touting is that it can do so much more movement than a human hence the the weird yogi poses yeah i've never like met a person who could do the wrong all that. way <laughs> and i've seen some really impressive yeah. moves on instagram from different yogis but nothing yeah. to that level <laughs> but you know whether we need that type of technology in our homes i can see obviously great use cases in commercial and military space um i'm sure having you know especially rescue i think robots are a really interesting space for sort of disaster relief and recovery um but in our homes i think the future probably is more robotics in more places in our home um, rather than one single robot that will roam around and do everything for us. Um, But I think it's a good goal, like it's a good sort of North Star to kind of help us innovate interesting areas. I mean, we have a robot that washes our dishes already, right? We have a robot that cleans our clothes already. We do need that next step of something to take the dishes out of the and put them away. Um, and, you know, but maybe that doesn't need to be a, a six foot tall humanoid robot in our kitchen. Maybe we can, someone can come up with a better solution. Yeah. Let that. It's <laughs> not going to cost so much either. Let that robot go make some money break dancing and we yeah. will, <laughs> we will keep doing our, our dishes. Um, I, yeah, overall, I, I think I, I agree with you. You know, I want to compare it to AI a little bit because we've seen, uh, for the most part, as generative AI has taken off, we have seen this general purpose generative AI kind of reaching uh, this level of like it's impressive what it can do. You can generate images with it. You can generate music in some cases. You can generate uh, just text just in conversations and asking you questions. But more and more, the terms that I keep hearing are agents, uh, Gen AI agents, Gen AI agents. And it's this idea that instead of having a single multi-purpose AI, that you have very specific focused AI tasks and you kind of ask the question and it goes to the right thing. I think we kind of see that, you know, you you mentioned this is kind of a North star, uh, but yeah, the idea that not every task that you're doing, it's much simpler, I think, and much more easy to grok. Yes. If we have uh, robots that are specifically tuned for each individual task and can be trained on doing that. But Uh, I recently saw a video of a robotic arm that uh, I think it was, it may have even been at San Francisco's, uh, at the San Francisco airport. And it is a coffee shop and you go up and you place your order and the robot makes your coffee. The time that it takes the robot to make the coffee (laughs) compared to the human being (laughs) is so much longer that the line was very long. They were in it for the novelty. But after that, it's like, I just need my coffee because my plane's about to board. Uh, How 
I so there, there are a couple of things where you know people then kind of ask questions. What's the reason for this? Why do we need this? And I think one place that we as tech people sometimes something that we we may kind of fail to see is uh, one aspect of this is of course accessibility and uh, mm. just frankly inclusivity in general. There are tasks that we as able-bodied people can perform that other people uh, struggle to perform on their own, maybe in some cases need the help of others to be able to perform. The idea that they could live a uh, more you know, normal, so to speak, life. Independent. Uh, yeah, an independent and average existence is fantastic. But I also think that, you know, there, there's uh, been a study or maybe even a couple of studies about the productivity of human beings. And we kind of have this idealized, uh, some of us have this idealized belief that people from years ago were far more uh, hardworking and productive and this and that than we are because they went and worked in the fields and toiled away. But when you look at what a human of today is able to achieve in a day and all of the different things that we're able to achieve, it is vastly more productive and vastly more impactful than the person who toiled in the fields. And so think about the person who, on top of everything that they have to get done in a day, is also going around and vacuuming their floors and mowing their lawn and doing this. And if they could you know, delegate that task to someone else to get more of the stuff that they need to get done. I think that that's a positive. And I, I think the idea that, you know, a human being just wants to, to be lazy and push off tasks uh, to someone else, maybe that could apply to me, <laughs> but I don't think that applies. <laughs> no, but that's to the whole generally. argument for the smart home there too. I think you're right. It's like, it's giving us the, it's giving us time by taking mundane and boring tasks off our hands to do the more interesting, innovative, fun, spend, you know, that I think that's a real value. And I think that's where robotics is really important and could, you know, eventually have a really important role in our homes. Um, I think there's also two sides to the robotics. And this kind of goes to my first comment about this being scary. Um, there's a real push to try and make robots feel kind of warm and cuddly and like have personalities. And I don't necessarily think that's a good thing either. And I kind of like this individual, as you mentioned, like the agents, individual robots, individual AI, because if it all comes together, it's much more likely to raise up and take over the world. Whereas if we keep it separate, <laughs> then it can't. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, in all seriousness, I think it also becomes more productive and more useful for us. And when things go wrong, you only lose the function of one element, like my robot vacuum's broken, doesn't mean that my dishwasher now That's doesn't work and that my washing machine now doesn't work. Whereas if you have this single humanoid robot that does everything in your house and when it breaks down or a firmware update goes bad, <laughs> nothing works anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Um, so I just, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. And that the, human, the humanization, I think, is this the kind of the real kind of conflict when it comes to robotics, like tr trying to make robots appeal to us on an emotional level as opposed to a practical and useful level, I find is a bit of a fine line that I think it's too many companies maybe are, are going the opposite direction. Although there's a huge amount of benefit in like, um, I know there's been a lot of evidence and studies done around loneliness mm -hmm. and how AI and there are some great, there's an interesting robot, um, uh, LEQ, which has been used as a study. Um, there was a study in New York to combat loneliness in seniors living alone. And they use this little AI robot and it's got a cute face and it talks to them and it has, um, it's proactive. So it talks to them as opposed to having with something like Amazon's Alexa, you need to talk to it. Mm -hmm. um, so there, you know, that, but again, I think that's a different sector and I think it's an interesting sector, but from, from what I'm interested in here is the practical side of robotics. Um, and I think I don't need a smiley face or a, a ring light <laughs> right. on my six foot robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can, we can uh, dispense with the, the kind of silly aspects of it. Thanks so much for watching this little chunk of Tech News Weekly. If you'd like to get the full episode, well, head over to twit.tv slash TNW. There you'll find buttons you can click or tap to subscribe to the entire show in audio and video formats. Or just look in the description. We've got links down there as well.